A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to our program, Afghan Discourse on Independent Television. My name is Evan Sunokoge. Well, for quite some time now, the issue with uh, Siri Ramaphosa has been ongoing, and a lot of persons actually thought that uh, uh, the farm gate issue uh, with him was one big problem that was going to uh, you know, fight against him politically in South Africa. But as we speak now, we understand that Siri Ramaphosa has won uh, to be the leader of the ANC, that's the African National Congress in South Africa. The very big question that politicians ask political analysts is how come that Siri Ramaphosa uh, was be, well, has been able to go through all the uh, storming uh, weather politically uh, in South Africa. Well, this is what we're going to be discussing today on the program African Discourse. And of course, you can also join us via our social media uh, handles uh, ever, at Evergreen Only. And of course, uh, you can also join at uh, www.itvradiong.com slash live on YouTube, ITV Radio NG, uh, so that you can be part of uh, the program this afternoon. The program is African Discourse, and you're welcome. Well, our guest for today is Comrade Nowita Igbotako, uh, a political analyst, a human rights activist, and of course, a human af uh, public affairs analyst. So you welcome to the program, African Discourse. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. All right. I, I know the fear the situation is biting <laughs> hard, but uh, somehow you still found time to yes. come. All right. So let's take it all into South Africa. Let's examine the political situation in South Africa. Sira Mafosa, this time we are not condemning him, but uh, we are praising him. Now, from your own perspective, give us an insight. Uh, how do you think Sir Ramaphosa has been able to go through the stormy weather? I mean, imagine as uh, the leader of ANC for the second time. Well, uh, firstly, Ramaphosa is not a uh, new person to South African politics. He's not a novice. When I say he's not a novice, he has been there, you know, why the Mandelas, the Tabun Bekis, the Water Sisulus, where they were in the forefront of the struggle. He was also equally behind them. You know, he was in the trade union movement and he made a lot of money. Uh, he exposed himself. One can equally say what Siri Ramaphosa is to South Africa today is what a uh, person like uh, uh, Donald Trump. Renata was the first billionaire that became American president. Mm. So, and say that Ramaphosa is more or less like Donald Trump of South Africa. So to say, in terms of financial heavy weight, he's a financial heavy weight. Mm. So, and he knows the game. And uh, one thing we must know, the majority in parliament are mostly from the, from the African National Congress. You no, know, we have other smaller parties. So he was able to weather the storm, he used his political weight and he used his financial weight. Because when, when you're talking about politics, you cannot develop politics from financial influence. Mm. Because what actually happened to him was enough to consume him politically. Right? Right? What happened to Tabo Mbeki, for instance? Uh, Tabo Mbeki was not accused of anything. He just he left. After, you know, Tabo Mbeki succeeded uh, uh, Nelson Mandela. Yeah. So when Tabo Mbeki saw their writing, he felt he didn't have the majority, he didn't have people behind him. So he, he, he left the scene for Jack Ozuma to come in. So for, an, for a Sir Ramaphosa uh, with that kind of uh, farm gate, that we will say the that farm gate scandal, the scandal yeah. that hung on his neck, yeah. and only for him to have survived, shows that he's a, he's a pragmatic politician, he knows his onions, he knows how to play the game in South African politics. So he used the majority to overwhelm other smaller parties in parliament. And uh, one thing that he made it to survive, the front runner who was gunning for his position, uh, one in Wizzle. Yeah, one uh, uh, Zweli, well, yeah. Zweli, Zweli <laughs> Keze. Keze, yeah. 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 The, the Minister of Health. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, he had problem with, he was formerly with uh, Sir mm. He had a problem in government, so he, he resigned. So, and he equally doesn't have a clean slate. The last minute to the to the you know to the D day, uh, issue of corruption came against him, and that made you know the camp of uh, Mafosa to have some confidence. Though the you, you can see the number of votes, uh, you know two two uh, two two thousand something to one hundred something. Mm. So that thing came down because of 
the alleged corrupt, you know, allegation against a uh, wizard that is a uh, main contender. Yeah. So Sir Ramaphosa survived because of these factors. You know, the guy who was chasing him had some problems. So that caught his uh, his uh, majority, mm. his his his, his uh, majority in parliament. Those who wanted to vote, they now saw that this man can even be better than a Sir Ramaphosa. Mm. Uh, Ramaphosa. Okay. So Ramaphosa survived because of those factors. Uh, he, he knows the game. He's a financial heavyweight. Uh, the guy who was chasing him could not. He's he had some issues. Mm. And uh, so the game is like that, not only in South Africa, almost everywhere in the world. The politicians want to survive and fight at the end. We saw what happened in, in, in the UK. But he just fought almost to the end. But so he has survived. We thank God for yeah, but, 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 he, but he has not escaped. Yeah, we are looking at the situation whereby the ANC, the African National Congress in South Africa, is perhaps one uh, political parties in South Africa that, uh, if you take a look at uh, the African continent, and of course you are looking at political parties that when it comes to corruption, uh, they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to be part of it. I mean, when the issue of Sir Ramaphosa came up, uh, you could see how the ANC came together and of course uh, the consideration was being made uh, whether or not to return him for next year's election. 2024 now is going to be the presidential yes. election. Yes. And a lot of persons thought that Siri Ramaphosa was going to lose out uh, only for him to come up now to be uh, the head of the ANC. Now, uh, what do you think is changing? Because whether we like it or not, um, uh, some persons uh, believe that uh, the farm gate scandal uh, you know, as it was reported, that C. Ramaphosa cannot really uh, be freed after all. I mean, how do you explain about 500,000 US dollars are found in your farm? Your farm. And, uh, you you made that attempt to conceal it. You understand? So how do you explain that? So what do you think is changing in South Africa? Is it that necessarily that the culture of uh, trying to go against corruption is changing in South Africa? No, the culture is not, is not changing. It does that. Uh, see, Ramaphosa has been able to weather the storm. You know, uh, you know, we must not forget easily that Jacob Zuma fought desperately. Jacob Zuma did not live just like that, if you remember. Mm. He weathered the storm, but he couldn't. But eventually he left. He left. Yeah. Uh -huh. But this man so far has uh, displayed his power, you know, that he's able to manipulate his way. But uh, the way I see him, I see him surviving to 2024 because he is the president, the, the majority of the parties in, uh, you know, he has the population going for him, mm. you know. So he will be able to weather the storm. I know that the police, the, the task office, and what have you, they are still doing their investigation. Mm. But for a man who was able to use his influence in parliament to shoot down, the panel report that indicted him. You know, there was a panel report that he did not allow, that, that report could not say true. Mm. Because the majority of the ANC and the, the, the parliament, the parliament the shut it down. down. Yeah. They say, you know, just like what we see happening even in the US Congress sometimes. They don't want something, it, it was coming during the reign of Donald Trump. If they don't want an issue to come, they will, they will shoot it down, they will use their majority and all that. Uh -huh. So that what happened. So what I see, uh, but going back to your first question, that whether the culture of fight corruption is it's not changing, people are still battling, he's still being battled. Uh, we should not just think that uh, he has escaped, no, he's still being battled. Those who are fighting are still desperate. But from my own point of view, he has, he has shown that he is a, he's a political force that cannot be ignored. He has shown that he can manipulate his way. Because one thing any politician have going for any politician is if you have a base, a very strong base, and that works for uh, is working for most politicians across the world. If your political base is very strong, you're able to overwhelm. But it's not a good thing for Africa anyway. Mm. It's not a good thing. What uh, it, it's a negative uh, development for Africa that the South Africa that came on board 1994 after the year horror of apartheid. And he's, he's gradually, you know, joining the League of Countries that have been besieged by corrupt practices. Mm. But as Sir Maposa has said, he's a financial heavyweight. He has made money, a lot of money, 
And he's, on, he's, he's quite unfortunate. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed in him that uh, in spite of the money he has made, uh, he's still gluttonous. Mm. Gluttonous, so to say that. He's still not settled. Okay. Because, because for, 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 for what we know so far about the family scandal, mm. he did that thing. You know, he's, he's still a corrupt man. He's a disappointment to the South African struggle. Mm. And it's a disappointment to the, yeah, yeah, you know, that, to that, the that, spirit. That, that, that's what we are looking at now. Because uh, if you look at uh, that uh, farm gate scandal, and uh, you read through the investigation, uh, we really cannot say that uh, Sira Mafosa is free after all. Just like it's what you're free. saying it's here not now, free. that because of his financial prowess, yeah, I mean, uh, he's been able to fight through and all financial that. Pro, financial think, financial yeah, no, which I don't you think that that may cost him some... Uh, the election, the presidential election is going to be next year, 2024. And uh, for most people, the ANC leadership is just a political thing. We are looking at a wider election, a wider situation now. Uh, so with what has been happening with the ANC uh, issue of corruption as it relates to South Africa and all that, do you think they can win next year's election? I'm talking about the ANC now. You see, whether uh, <laughs> the ANC is a team, in South African politics, it's a thing. It's a phenomenon. It's, it's a phenomenon. It's a thing. It's a political thing. The, the African National Congress is is rooted. You know, if the if an African National Congress, whoever they bring to you know as, as a flag barrier, yeah, flag bearer, mm. will clean the presidency. They have their base. It's a, so irrespective of allegations. Uh, yeah. That, that may be your opinion on which side, Butako. You see, the other parties are smaller parties. Mm. Uh, this thing has been demonstrated even in parliament. That is why he survived this uh, scandal. Come to the general South African society. I see the African National Congress, you know, bulldozing their way with Siri Ramaphosa. Uh, Siri Ramaphosa. But they may know you know, charmed uh, elaborately, so to say. I mean, that word. They may not charmed electorally, you know, elaborately. In terms of they, they may not have a landslide mm. that they used to have. But I see a candidate of African National Congress, you know, getting the presidency because the followership are there, the political base are there. And I have not seen any challenger. Yeah, that we, has, we, we, are, we are looking at... So far, we are looking at a political... Is he the guy that wanted to be... That was running neck and neck with him? Where eventually got himself with some corrupt uh, uh, allegations? Uh, yeah, in no, Wizzy or whatever they call uh, it. Yeah, yeah the, uh -huh. what's his name now? Uh, uh, yeah. Zueli, that is, yeah. Zueli in Keze. In, in Keze. Yeah. Is he the guy that... He, he, if uh, in Keze appear with say, Ramaphosa in 2024, Ramaphosa we, 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 we dust him. Mm. Because he doesn't have a fantastic record. Except... Maybe some other, you know, just about what we have in Nigeria now. Maybe something phenomenal, which you cannot see now. Yeah, no, which I exactly. But I see you, you the see. dominance of the African National Congress mm. in the next year, 2024 presidential election. No, which I exactly. You seem to be more, uh, you know, so interested about his his uh, financial prowess now. It, it, it's uh, which, a factor uh, which which uh, which seems not to be a major thing in South Africa because I do know that uh, the South African politics, especially as it relates to the ANC, they don't look at how financially buoyant you are, uh, but they look at the acceptability that you have as a candidate. So, with <laughs> what has been happening so far with Sira Mafosa, uh, do you think he still has that acceptance? Now, remember, it is not only the issue of corruption. Uh, we also have the issue of uh, how he has not been able to stabilize the economy yeah, for yeah. some time. Yeah, the, the economic, uh, yeah. Uh, for a period of about three, four years now, the South African economy has been yeah. dwindling. Unemployment Power costs are in Nigeria. You know, issues that have to do with uh, how uh, the average South African cannot get jobs and all yeah, that. Yeah. So with all this put together, uh, do you used to see Siri Ramaphosa as a popular candidate for next year's election? Uh, just as I say, he is a sitting president. Uh, and a sitting president will do everything to clinch uh, what we call re-election. You understand? So I see a Ramaphosa, a C. Ramaphosa you, know, you know, having its way. But just as I said earlier, the scandal, the family scandal has really reduced his uh, popularity. There's no, no doubt, no about, doubt that. about that. Yeah. And the economy is not going too well for him. We have unemployment, we have in Nigeria, economic crisis, energy crisis, the system of power cuts, 
crime is an issue in South Africa and all that. But uh, just as I said, I don't I have not seen a political heavyweight. But I've been looking at South African politics. I've not seen a, a, a political heavyweight, a character that is uh, larger in terms of uh, financial power, political power, and uh, you know ethnic power. When I say ethnic power, the blacks, they are the majority. For instance, after apartheid, after the uh, annual apartheid, Peter Bota, uh, sorry, uh, what is his name? The last president of South Africa. Uh, Jacob Zuma. No, no the, the former apartheid lord. Okay. The man who had that power. I, I, I will remember uh, as, as we go along. Uh, uh, are you talking about uh, Mandela now? No, Mandela. Oh. The, the last uh, white president okay. that came before, before Mandela came on board. Mm. I will remember his name as we go about. Yeah. So, when they were, when, when it was exiting power, they knew the end had come for any chance for a white uh, you know, person, mm. for the minority group to come and be president. That is closed. There's no minority uh, you know, that can come around South Africa because the majority are South African, black South Africans, the natives. You understand? So as we speak, I don't see any strong contender. I've not seen. Maybe I've not done enough research to that level. Uh -huh. Because if there's going to be any power that will pose a threat to Syria and Ramaphosa, that power must come from the African National Congress. Mm. Okay. So I've not seen that. Uh, and as I said, his popularity, popularity has waned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that is not to say that when the chips are down, as you see the ANC mm -hmm. carrying the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's uh, look at, uh, uh, you know, what uh, seems to be brewing around now, uh, you know, politically, as far as the African continent is concerned. I don't know whether Nobuta Ibutako is of that opinion too, because uh, uh, many, um, you know, you may want to call them people that look at issues on the continent of Africa, uh, perhaps of the opinion that uh, uh, the South African politics is not leaving anything to other nations of Africa to learn from. I mean, a situation whereby just because uh, uh, you are financially buoyant, then of course you can pave your way through any allegations and all that. Now, with what has been going on with Syria Mafosa and uh, the ANC as a party, uh, do you think that uh, Syria is leading a way that other African politicians uh, can learn from. Don't you think that um, it's more or less like a bad example? It now? is. It is. It, it is already becoming a bad woman mm. because, as I said, uh, when apartheid was uh, overwhelmed in 1994, you know, when uh, the majority rule came on board and uh, Inessi Mandela became president, mm. so much hope, so much expectations. For South Africa, mm. though Nelson Mandela tried his bid, his beat, uh, he refused to go for his second term in office. Mm. Mandela, given his age at that time, he weathered his storm. He tried to stabilize post-apartheid South Africa, you know. And he said they were trying to probe him to go for the second term. He said no. So the exit of uh, Nelson Mandela. Uh, in South African politics has not, uh, you know, give us something to smile about, so to say. Though the man that succeeded uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, Tabu Mbeke, mm. a, a calm, you know, easygoing president who was not involved in any form of corruption, but he lost out the power gain. Mm. So talking about giving example and showing example, uh, you see, Ramaphosa, for instance, has become a bad example. Because we could have said Ramaphosa, we could have caught some Nigerian politicians here. We could have mentioned their names. Because um, it, when people, when you have money backs in politics, that's what I said. You see, Ramaf what see Ramaphosa is to South African politics. That's what Donald Trump is to American politics. Okay. And, and when you have a lot of money in your pocket, mm. you know, you can, do it, you can do a lot of damage, you can do a lot of influence. So for me, Siri Ramaphosa is a minus for African development and politics. It's a minus. He has not shown a good example. That's why I said he made so much money. He was quite influential. When he left, all the Mandela's, Watasisulu, Govan Becky, 
uh, name them. The, uh, Edwin de Clark. Uh, I said. Uh, yeah, Tambo Becky. Tambo Becky. Yeah. Uh, Water Sisulu, mm. and name them the you know the giants mm. that fought apartheid. Why they were you know doing it? He was behind. He was you know as a student, he was a student, he was a, he was a, as a student in university. Well, remember South Africa Student Association, Sasso. He was a disciple of, uh, uh, what is his name now? I will get his name. Of Chambo Mbeki. No, he was a disciple of uh, a one South African uh, legendary fighter. Mm. Uh, the name has not come now. I remember his name. So he has been there. Uh, he, 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 at that time, he was a son of the struggle. And he, and, and he met an force and graduated into leadership position. And he made a lot of money. And the, the disappointment I'm talking about now is after making so much money, it was a trade union. You know, he made a lot of money. He has, he has investment here and there. That shows that uh, the man is a disappointment. And for him to have, uh, you know, saw his hands in a uh, farm gate scandal, it's a disappointment. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if, if we have, anyway, a, let if, us if, not if, if we even have any integrity, yeah, because we said investigations are still ongoing as but far as the farm gate issue. They're overwhelming in the parliament. They, they, they don't forget, in the parliament, they did not allow the report. That was a panel report mm. on the farm gate scandal to be read. To be read, they shut it down. This means he has something to hide. Yeah. So it's a, for African struggle for African student. For political science student, international study student, Cyril Ramaphosa is a disappointment. He's not shown good example as a for, as a you know as, as a clean uh, you know guy in, in in politics. He has shown that uh, he, he's more concerned about his pocket, mm. you know, than because we, we expect him to be fighting tooth and nail to get the South African economy working. Those are we have in Nigeria. There are issues of unemployment, issue of uh, energy crisis, issue of uh, crime. One of the biggest crime, one of, South Africa is one of the biggest uh, abode of crime in Africa. So we expected a young man at that level who, who knew the history of the struggle, who knew what the my Mandela's, the Water Sisulu, the Govan Becky, what they did. We expected him to have come up clean and be a nationalistic leader, mm. not a leader. That because he has shown that he, 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 he's a capitalist to the core, mm. you know. Like we, we, no, there is no crime for him to be a, to be a, capitalist. a capitalist. But as a president, he should have shown a fantastic example, mm. so that we will be proud. Okay. We know what other people are doing. This. Okay, for instance, the New Zealand president, Agent Jacinda, mm. New Zealand, mm. some few weeks ago, he's a little woman. She resigned, and she was not even accused of any financial impropriety or any abuse of office, mm. but she showed that her popularity was going down. Why not a Sir Ramaphosa you know, take anyway, that kind of example? Uh, we, we'll so it's there. ambitious. Yeah, we'll, we'll pause there, we'll pause <laughs> there, and uh, that will be where we're going to uh, start from. Mm. Uh, we will come back on the other side of uh, the time. Don't forget the program is African Discourse on Independent Television. And uh, we are discussing South African politics today and also looking at Siri Ramaphosa, the South African president. One guy, one man, you may want to say, that has been embattled recently. Uh, an issue came up, an issue of corruption, uh, you know, tag at the farm gate uh, scandal. And of course, it was one thing that threatened his position as yeah. uh, the president of South Africa. And a lot of persons, uh, you know, thought that uh, uh, the African National Congress, the ANC, will not, uh, uh, you know, uh, have him again for next year's election. Uh, but as we speak now, he's been elected as the ANC leader. And of course, what that shows is that uh, he might just be uh, the presidential candidate Friday, for yeah. uh, the election uh, next year. So what is in Siri Ramaphosa? What is in South African, uh, what is in African politics uh, that mm -hmm. um, uh, we find uh, that when leaders are accused, instead of them to uh, maybe resign, just like what we have in New Zealand, uh, they don't resign and they stay put and of course, uh, the fight they cause. What is it in uh, African politics and what is in African politicians that uh, uh, we probably would not know? So we'll just take a short pause now and on the other side, we'll continue from there. Please stay.
All right, uh, you're welcome back. The program stay here, African Discourse on Independent Television. Siri Ramaphosa is uh, the character that uh, we are talking about uh, again today, talking about the South African president. And uh, just like what we said before we had to go on that break, uh, what is in South African, what is an African leader, so to say, and of course, uh, what is in African politics? Uh, that uh, uh, when you have leaders accused of corruption, allegations leveled against them in one way or the other, they don't resign. They still head on, and of course, uh, to fight uh, the cause. Well, uh, just like what we said, that Syria Mafuza, it's uh, our talking point, uh, you know, as it relates to that now. No, so, no, which I go to could now. Now, uh, let us take our mind back a little. Uh, with the way Jacob Zuma, you know, left and yeah. all that, Sira Mafuza was also one strong character. It yeah. was this same um, uh, issue of corruption that came up against uh, Jacob Zuma. And uh, he couldn't stay because <laughs> the ANC, if you're accused of any corruption, you have to step down. Have to step down. But the way things are opening now, it is very clear that uh, Sira Mafuza was perhaps uh, the force that was behind uh, the ousting of uh, Jacob Zuma. So, Along with that, I know you want to talk about that now. So as you want to talk about it, let us also look at the African politics and African leaders. What is in African politics and what is in our leaders that um, when allegations are leveled against them, uh, they don't bow out, they stay on, and uh, they, just, they, they just fight. Uh, what is in, in them? Well, in African leaders, uh, they are shameless, you know. Mm. You, you cannot say so uh, now. Most of them. Sweeping, uh, no. That, that, because, would be, that would be a sweeping generalization. When, when you have, <laughs> most of them, they are very shameless. Mm. In African leaders, okay, look at Cameroon. The man is dying. He's still being, you know, mm. propelled to be president. Mm. You don't see his clip recently? Mm. Cameroon. Mm. At almost 90. And because his wife wants power, elegance, and influence, and, and his children, they are still pushing. They are, they are for me, it's, uh, it's, it, they are shameless. Mm. And they, they have shown that they don't have integrity. And they don't have the, the interest of the people at heart. You understand? A, 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 a Syria Maposa, for instance, who orchestrated the exit of Jacob Zuma. He has succeeded Zuma now. Look at what he's doing. This means he, 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 from the one is not a missionary leader. He doesn't believe in the people. He does not sing about it, talk about it. Because if if he's, if, if, if he's a serious minded character, he will have he will have he will have, he will have, he will have a, a, a will have cutted a roadmap to take South Africa and South Africans to the next level. But this is a man who made so much money. Why, why uh, people like Chris Honey? Now, when you say roadmap now, what, what, yes, what is that? He has not shown that he has articulated a roadmap to take us to the next level. Yeah, when you say roadmap now, what exactly are you, are you talking about? They, they, because the roadmap that we know for South Africa is that once uh, you are accused of any corruption, you bad out. That seems to have been uh, the order, except that C. Ramaphosa is the first person now that is, uh, you know, that is welding the storm. That's, that is welding the storm <laughs> and not leaving. So is that the, 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 the roadmap that? When you I say roadmap, I mean his personal roadmap. Mm. But he doesn't have one. If he has a roadmap, if he has articulated a roadmap, but like, probably he would have resigned. Oh, I've come short of what I have for the people of South Africa. Oh, this is what I want to be. This is what I want to be. For him to have even involved in saying that fan this scandal, it, it is, it is, it is uh, unfortunate. It is regrettable. You know, and given what has happened to that country, given the several years of apartheid, years of horror, humiliating slavery imposed by the Boers, you know, before Freddie de Klerk led the scene in 1994, mm. given the history, the horrible history, the terrible history, one expected that the leaders of post South African, uh, of post South Africa, would be missionary leaders and visionary leaders. Ramaphosa is a disappointment. So what you see in Africa, as I said it before, they are, they, they are shameless, they, 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 they are ideologically, they are hollow, because if, if, if ideologically they have something to give to the people, uh, South Africa will not be where, where it is. Most African countries will not be where we are. So I think that's a problem in Africa. Mm. Though some of these problems have been, we see them across the world now. 
Right. Like what Jonathan did in South in America. In the US. In the US, it's a, it's a very negative phenomenon. But the system is fighting him now, which is very, which is very good. But no system is fighting Ramaphosa for now. Ramaphosa seems to be above the system because he has the majority, he has the financial power to, to shoot his way through. So in Africa, uh, that's a problem. The African people, they have to wake up. Those are Nigerians are waking up. Mm. Nigerian people are waking up. The youth are waking up. They are tired of hold hands. They are tired of people who are, who are already relapsing to dementia. People who have stolen the, 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 our treasury, our commonwealth, and they, are, they still want to continue. Nigerians, you said no. So I expect the South Africans to come on board and say, well, you know, you asked a question earlier, mm. that are you sure if Sir Ramaphosa can skate through 2024 presidential election? election. You asked that question, given yeah. the scandal. If he eventually becomes the candidate. Yeah, yeah. In, in way, I can assure you that. <laughs> <laughs> An African, <laughs> he's, he's in the blood. Yeah. He will emerge. And he has his men. When I was looking at the, he has his men in the African National Congress. The Secretary General, the leader, the deans, it's only one guy that is not in his camp. <laughs> so the people who desire who becomes who, they are his boys. <laughs> so uh, that's what we see in Africa. That's what we see in Nigeria. That's what you see everywhere. It's, it's a problem. And we don't have to fight this and rescue Africa. From uh, leaders who have lost, uh, you know, who have lost touch with reality, mm. the social political reality in their countries. Because I expected a Ramaphosa, a Ramaphosa, for instance, just as I said, to, to, have, to have articulated a program that would take the people out of poverty, that would handle the energy crisis, unemployment, and all that. But he, but he is fighting, he is saving his head politically. Fighting allegations. Allegations. Is, uh, people like Chris Honey. <coughs> These are the. the, the, the they, they, these are martyrs that died for the struggle. Chris Hane, who died, he was shot a few, few months to 1994 when, when uh, freedom eventually came. You know. People like uh, you know, uh, uh, Chris Hane, people like uh, Steve Biko, who founded the South African uh, Student Association, SASO, in South Africa, which is Siri Ramaphosa. Well, even when he was in university, became a member of such an organization, the Black Consciousness uh, movement, movement yeah. and all that. For me, the uh, people like Chris Hane, you know, you know, uh, Chris Hane, people like uh, uh, you know, <coughs> people like uh, Chris Hane, Steve Biko, and name them, Anton Lembende, these are veterans, matter of the struggle. They will be turning their graves. What is happening to post South Africa, post apartheid South Africa? So, for as I said earlier, it's a Ramaphosa is a disappointment, mm. and uh, and I throw a challenge to the people of South Africa, to the African National Congress. I throw a challenge to the youth, because they have the youth wing. They can they, they can they can they can manipulate their way and let sanity prevail in Africa in the leadership of African National Congress. Mm. There's no there, there, there's no sanity, my brother. Mm. If there is sanity, it's a Ramaphosa will not will not have survived. What happened? Anyway. Because he's seen thought, as I said, his boys, his agent, mm. they are in the executive council. Mm. All right. So, so the so, ANC, the African National Congress, uh, seems to be uh, the biggest. Uh, he's the biggest. Am I permitted to use that word? Now? He's the, the big, he's biggest the political party, party in South Africa, and uh, I think that um, that was gotten uh, immediately after the struggle, even before the struggle of appetite, the, you know, the, after the independence and all that. Yeah, it, it came out an offshoot. Of the struggle, African yeah. National Congress, Congress. Uh, yes. it became a party. Yeah. So, it's so, been there. so, so the question I want to ask this afternoon: uh, it appears because just like what you said that the founding fathers of that uh, party, yes. uh, right in their grave today, they'll be turning. They, they won't be happy. They won't that, be happy. Uh, what is going on? This, Sibiko, this, for instance, this, 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 these were not the uh, you know the things that we founded. They were, they were not this the blueprint they had. So would we want to say here, and uh, uh, Navi, I mean, uh, no, which I which I could now. Uh, that it's high time, probably it's high time that uh, the ANC begin to, uh, other political parties begin to emerge uh, you know, against the stronghold of the ANC. Well, uh, I'm sure it will get to that because 
if uh, <laughs> in Nigeria today, I don't want to mention names, if a political phenomenon that we all know mm. that has caught across every strata, ethnic, religious, political strata, in Nigeria, I don't want to mention names. Mm. We know, viewers will know where I'm going. Mm. If, but, 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 but why don't we wait for the election no, first? No, <laughs> I'm coming. No. You know, you know, you know uh, politics could be dynamic. Uh, but let us wait for it. Is, it is election. Election is the only true test of a candidate's popularity. So let's wait for the election first. Well, uh, because you asked a question. Is it like this ding dong that the South Africa will continue to go, that they will not challenge the system? But I see a situation whereby some 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 personalities mm. who, who 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 will have been able to look at the history of south africa mm. who will have been able to look at what mandela did what chris Hane did what Tassisulu did Antoine lembede all these are these are these are ancestors revolutionary ancestors that that paid the way for you for you that 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 gave their lives for a post uh, you know, apartheid South Africa. So, if those persons rise up, I know they will rise up, mm. and they can even challenge the leader of the National African National Congress. What you don't know, so some people would have been watching now. What is happening to the African National Congress? So, if what is happening in Nigeria today is happening, though you said election is yet to take place. Uh, election. Yeah. Yeah. So, for, for so I see a situation in South Africa. In not too far, mm. distant future, whereby some, some characters, some determined people will come up and challenge the status quo. That is dynamism in, in, in society. Mm. So I don't see it going ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. And uh, for me, if that character who wanted to take Sir Ramaphosa's position had a clean slate, probably would have, over, have overwhelmed him in the parliament. Mm. But as they go towards the election, towards the voting, Things are there coming up. That is, this guy is still a corruption uh, issue. So I see in the nearest future vibrant, missionary, intelligent, you know, South Africans mm. coming up mm. to struggle for power. Okay. Now, and tell the old guard, oh, yeah. this is the time for us to come up. Yeah. The the position of the of the leadership of the ANC is uh, very very strategic, as far as. Uh, uh, you know, political win is concerned in South Africa. Sir Ramaphosa is going to be doing it now for the second term, uh, for the second time, and of course, uh, he's going to be doing that for the next uh, five years. Uh, the presidential election is next year in South Africa, and uh, if he wins, uh, he's going to stay for another four, four years, or five, five years. years. Now, uh, <laughs> let's get it straight. Now, do you think uh, South Africans, uh, because uh, uh, the issue of South African politics has become a, glo a global thing. It a is. lot of persons, especially on the continent of yes, Africa, most Nigerians, they are so interested in South African politics. After Nigeria, they want to know what is going on in South Africa. So let's stretch our mind for that in which I go uh, Do we think here that uh, with all that has transpired, we see Ramaphosa, the farm gates issue, uh, corruption, uh, not uh, finding jobs and all that in South yeah, Africa. crisis, uh, energy crisis. You, you think the average African can withstand a C. Ramaphosa for the next four or five years as the president of that country, if eventually if he wins? And if he's taken as a candidate and if he wins? Well, in politics, African policy, for instance, uh, a lot of things come to play, you know, uh, when he might become a president. It's more like a semi-god. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's more like a semi-god. The person will use the presidential powers to manipulate his way. His influence. His influence. Yeah. And when you see people like Pobia, mm. you know, that's a very terrible example. <laughs> like Pobia, who is uh, who, who is dying in his in his nineties? <laughs> in his nineties. Yeah. The, the oldest, <laughs> one, the second oldest African leader now. A, a Pobia who is a, who has become who has more or less gone dementia, mm. you know, she's struggling for power. What do we expect from a South African president? You know, so I see Isidre Mafusa having his way, mm. just like every other African president, until the people that matters will stop him. 
That, that's where I look at who, it. Who are the people this time? Uh, probably from his uh, African National Congress, because the African National Congress is entrenched. What do you it's make like of this? Purpose. What do you make of this one one way party thing <laughs> that seems to be a major political issue in Africa? I mean, here in Nigeria, it's almost the same situation. Uh, no, we, we may have various political mm. parties in, in Nigeria, but uh, you and I know that when it comes to politics, there's that tendency uh, for elections to want to go to one side. What is that thing in our politics in Africa? You see, in African politics, you know, the elite and the conservatives, mm. they like to cram themselves into one camp. Mm. Opportunism. Opportunism is, is a word. Mm. They don't want to struggle. They want a level playing platform where they will step in and be what they want to be. Mm. They want to be ministers, they want to be a house of reps, they want to be a, a, you know, lawmakers and all that. So the same phenomenon that is playing all over Africa. So that is why I see a Sri Ramaphosa, for instance, having its way. Because those who have said, okay, Let's fight him. They don't want to struggle. They don't want to sacrifice. They want a fighter feed. Do they have uh, the capacity to even fight him? <laughs> That's the question. Yes, yeah, so people have money, but they don't want to spend it. That is the issue. That, that is the truth of the matter. Are you saying Mr. Ramaphosa is the, is the, is the, is the biggest uh, financial heavyweight in South Africa? No. 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 <laughs> but, but, but he has shown interest in politics, and he's having his way. Mm. He just for some persons, to say, no, let's take another dimension. Let's create another footpath, political footpath. Let's challenge the status quo. Let's remove the old guard. So uh, it, it, South Africa will come to that. So for now, because of opportunism, conservatism, that's uh, uh, fair weather politicians, mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't want to struggle. That's what happened in Nigeria. Mm. The MPA of those in Nigeria, uh, when I'm a force into, into uh, uh, what is his name? SDP. The SDP from there. So you have APC a, now. A PDP, APC, and all that. So people do the same thing. Because the ANC has been there. That's historical, you know, you know for South Africans when I struggle for struggle. Mm. You know, during the apartheid era, they've been there. And when the opportunity came for them to step into power, it made them force into a political party. So most people, who is who? Opportunist. They find themselves a base, they have a platform to, to run their show. Okay. So it, it will take some time for that kind of party to be, uh, you know, to be broken down. Mm. Or All to right. be decimated. All right, so uh, as we prepare to draw the curtain on this show today now, uh, Nigeria is going to be having an election, presidential election, come February 25th uh, this year. Uh, South Africa is not going to be having an election this year, except next year, 2024. And uh, we understand that uh, all other nations, you have Syria alone, uh, we have uh, Liberia, and of course, uh, we'll have one or two other countries that are going to be having an election this year, 2023, on the continent of Africa. Now, the South African politics seems to be one big politics. That, it is. Uh, most nations on the continent, they look at South Africa. Uh, maybe somehow it is uh, the best in terms of uh, economical status now, economical stability and all that, except very recently that we're having issues uh, with uh, the, uh, the economy there yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. Now, nations on the continent of Africa, they look at South Africa, you know, so as Nigeria as a nation now preparing for election, what lessons do you think we should take from the South African experience with what has been all happening in the past few months in South Africa? Hmm. I think what should you take from South Africa experience is that the vigor that the rivals of Sri Mahaphosa have brought into the fight against him I think it's commendable. But they are not succeeding. <laughs> yeah, but the fight continues. As I said, the task office is still investigating Sir Ramaphosa. Mm. The, the court, they are, they are pursuing. <laughs> the parliament is still there. The redacted report is still there. Mm. So, and the fight continues. Now, many people say that all those investigations, pockets of investigations here are there, that uh, 
they, they are not going to amount to anything. They are going to die down naturally. I mean, the biggest arm of government, one of the biggest arm of government now, the parliament in South Africa, has almost done and dusted with their investigation. So if the, par if the parliament has uh, maybe given a green light to Siri to continue, so which other investigation do you think, do you think will come and up they are still pointing, They are still spoiling for fights. Because when I, when I look, at, uh, look at a document some few days ago, mm. they are still fighting. They are still saying, we won't, we won't, we won't, we won't let it be. We will say, go ahead. The most investigation. Uh -huh. So what you should take from them, those as you ask your question, yeah. is for Nigerian people, Nigerian parliament, to take a cue, mm. not to be a robber stamp. What do we have the National Assembly of Nigeria? Or in most assemblies in the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Rubber stampers. They don't give fight to any executive. You know, allegedly they collect bags of Ghana must go. Allegedly, I'm using that word. And they compromise. You know, how many times have Nigerian, some people in the National Assembly said they want to, they want to uh, probe uh, Muhammad Buhari, for instance? How many times have some voices risen up in the National Assembly to say they want to impeach President Muhammad Buhari? What came out of it? So, I, if there's anything we must take away from what has happened in Syria, Ramaphosa, South Africa, I challenge Nigerian lawmakers not to, be, not, not to compromise. If you have your facts, push on. You may not win at the end of the day, but let, let it be seen that you give a fight. Mm -hmm. That but that is the beauty of democracy. You don't sit down as some lame dogs, as politicians, and allow everything to fall in your heads, fall on the nation, and nobody is talking. So uh, I challenge Nigerian lawmakers, even as the president of Rari is, is going by May, mm. we still have issues on the ground. The fourth crisis is there. The oil theft is there. The all sort of manipulation in the system. We challenge them to call the president to order. What is happening? Why are we not having four in Nigeria? Who are the, who are the people taking up four across the borders? Who are the people making Nigerians not, not to be uncomfortable? Today, I understand there was a peaceful protest against four in Nigeria. Yeah. So the, we should take on the presidency. The president has, from, from what we have seen, the president seems to have distanced himself for positive leadership, political leadership. Mm. The people seem to have lost their way in the periphery of governance. The people don't have a way. The president has shot them out. So Nigerians so Nigerian should, should, should rise up, not violently, but peacefully, as we have come, as some of our people have come out today to protest. Right, they should so, speak out. Yeah. Just like people in South Africa have spoken out mm. against Sri Ramaphosa, they have not succeeded, but they might succeed. Mm. So it is a crime to keep quiet and be a bystander. Yeah, well, we should we fight and fight in the name of democracy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you so much, Dovita Ibutako. Thank you, my uh, brother. Baby, thank you for finding time to come on the show today, African Discourse. This is where we draw the curtain. And uh, we just uh, hope and pray that uh, all these talks about uh, African politics should be something that uh, uh, nations, in, on, nations in African continents should learn from. Because uh, the South African experience is one thing that uh, almost all nations on the, uh, on, the Niger on the African continent want to take a, a cue from. So let us uh, learn the right thing so that uh, we don't learn uh, the very wrong uh, tenets of uh, politics. Well, very big thank you one more time. It's a pleasure. Uh, for finding time. Thank you The so program much. is going to return same time next week. Until then, my name is Evan Sunovogay. Goodbye and God bless you.